Greetings and happy Valentine's Day to all of you, amigos y amigas del corazón. Today I'm going to speak to you about the tapestry of American dirt. Or is it American pie? Or is it American me? Or the politics of the meme? Recently, we have been regaled with the most intense and rapid fire bronca of the 2020 New Year in the publishing world. The newly minted Latinx writers se echaron a verbal trancasos with Macmillan, one of five corporate publishers in New York, as well as their well-paid writer, Janine Cummings. The monetary rewards for this writer have been enormous from both the publishing world and film industry. What writer in, of recent times is so well paid? Stephen King, John Grisham, both of whom have blurred, blurred the book. In the age of identity politics, I myself have been a Mexican, a Mexican-American, a Chicana, a woman of color, and now according to our New Age colonizers, I'm a Latinx. Welcome to the big top of the of our media circus of today. Quite a tempest in the corporate tea teapot, comprised of 80% white staff and stable of writers. The rest of us of color or hybrids of color have to wedge ourselves into the 20% left of that American pie. The bronca took off after NBC News reported that Oprah Winfrey had selected American Dirt, or is that American Me, uh, for her book club selection. And on the Latinx contingent, Marion Gurva let out the rallying cry with the commissioned review that was turned down by Ms. because of, of its incivility. The title was, Pendeja, you ain't John Steinbeck. This is her bronca with fake ass justice literature. For her, the book became a hate reading project. All I can say is that her hate reading is an eloquent verbosity that I actually enjoyed. Pie creaming Miss Cummings, or is it Miss Daisy? What rankles, she continues, is the a priori anointed blockbuster book, says Gurva. The question becomes, who can speak for the silence migrants? the one so silenced that she has become, or he has become, a stateless person. What nation state can he or she appeal to for succor, for, re for rescue? In past decades, some have appealed to the United Nations or the World Court, yet they have not been very supportive in the long run. As a result of contending sides in public opinion, there is a pylon, including Eva Longorio. Many of their commentators have not read the book. For a long time, it seemed to me that only those commissioned to review the book had read at least part of the book. They Did the blurbers read the book, the whole book? Do they have the time? Stephen King, John Grisham, everyone, do they have the time? I was in shock. Who has read the book? 
Cisneros was in front lines of the bronca and she alerted me to the bronca. I said, I'll talk with you later after I read the book. I agree with Latinx view that the book was not written for me. If it weren't for the gran bronca of the book, I would not have read American Dirt. I have read many books and have been on, have seen many films on the migrant travails, journeys, and testimonials of violence. I'm not in the mood for aestheticized version of misery and suffering. Indeed, it was not written, it was, I'm sorry, it was written for Oprah's book club and her Gabacha and Gabachoide fans. In fact, as per Cummings, she wrote the book for such an audience. She thought she could make the invisible visible. Obviously, we have failed, uh, Latinx contingent and predecessors have failed to make us visible. And we have failed to mobilize the audience that she wants to mobilize around the inhumane problem. Maybe that may happen in the long run. Who knows the ways of apathy? Maybe the main character, Lydia, who was apathetic, can change how we think of the world. change how we think of the world, it changes us in a profound way, says the editor of Macmillan. I don't know who the we are in the statement, Lydia and, Ly and the Lydias of the world uh, have been, are the targeted audience. Response, given the, given the scale of the bronca, some of us are watching the believed transformation of the targeted audience by booksellers and filmmakers. She did, however, mobilize the fury of writers who are well-versed on the suffering of migrants. Neither publishers nor Cummings expected the fury of such Latinx writers. At some point in my reading, I started getting bored because of the repetitiveness of the narrative. Why? It's well written. Cummings is a member of the show and tell cadre of contemporary writers including some Latinx, or many Latinx writers. Oprah said, it was a transformative read, amen. Others have said, riveting, devastating, thrilling. I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting aroused one single bit. The usual hype around the book a publisher invested in and wishes to promote. You have to read it to see if the hype is as correct as it claims. So I had to take a break and refocus in a manner of speaking, asking, what's my review of a tale often told amongst us, Mexican Ams, Chicanos, and Latinx, in a variety of ways, we have told that story already. The lashes and counter lashes were making me dizzy, and the book was boring me. I have, I know I'm going to get a happy ending. It is the happy ending of an individual. They have enough money at their command to pay their way across the border. Lydia Coyote and others in her group 
had to pay six ounces and dollars a piece to pay for each of themselves, not to speak of paying their way to corrupt migrant poli police across Mexico. The so-called mordida is as much a Mexican tradition as is El Dia de los Muertos. How does the gringo version of mordida go? Halloween is gringo version of El Dia de los Muertos. Instructed and included as potential readers the, the lineup of perspectives, perspective actors, and lots of extras, the unwashes, wash masses, yearning to be free, that is, the book is prepped for Hollywood. It's merely writing for the treatment, as they say. The first scene to which Oprah says, I'm in, is the massacre of the Perez family at a quinceañera barbecue, along with the reporter who broke the news on the new Acapulco cartel jefe. Javier Crespo Fuentes, called La Lechuza, and his minions are called Jardineros. The sobriquet is invented by Cummings, very clever, symbolic, ready for the memes. We get a professional-looking crime scene for those of us who watch the crime shows of the 21st century. From then on, we are supposed to follow Lydia and her son, Luca, the heroes of the book, on their paranoid, terrified, and frantic flight to the bestia north of Mexico City, to the U.S. border crossing in Nogales, Arizona. John Grisham, as I noted, the dean, as I note, the dean of the legal thriller, blurs that it's a page-turner book and non-political. I wonder if he thinks his own books are non-political. Think of the firm, the client, and others. Cummings chose an excellent heroine for her book, an apolitical, bourgeois Mexican woman. Gurva says that Lydia fails to convey any Mexican sensibility. Well, in a manner of speaking, she does. I mean, she likes tacos and tamales, but she is an apolitical, bourgeois Mexican woman, a woman who has access to enough pesos, a total of $20,000, that she will use to pay her way as well as rescue a couple of young women in order to get to the border. By the time she gets to the border, she doesn't have $20,000 left at all. How many of you have that much so you can make it to the border? Cummings chooses an excellent heroine for her book, as I said. I have not many, so I have met many, so Let's not play with who's the real Mexican in the room. It's through Lydia's political naivete that some readers will scrutinize and dig up the politics revealed in the text in a sub rosa style, which is the style of the book's heroine that can function as Cummings own double, the writer's double, Tell you one thing, my acquaintances in Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois always said to me, but you don't look Mexican. Then when they find out and you, they say that you are not, you don't look Mexican. And you're as alien to them as the second or third view reveals 
over and over. These are the contradictions and paradoxes of our Mexican existence, whether it be 50% or 100% in binational theater. The depiction of law enforcement officers begin Lydia's education in the politics of the nation state. She is informed by the clean cop that one third of police is on the take for cartels. I will add to that that the elected and appointed officials are also on the take. Another third percent? I don't know. Certainly, the, the ones that can ferret out that kind of fact, like investigative reporters, are being called, are being called to task and murdered for reporting what is happening. The corruption moves from top to bottom and vice versa never a truer stereotype of corruption can, can, is revealed, at least in part. The U.S. has been going in that direction for some decades as well, or maybe more. How many of you feel that you are a people without a nation state of your own? That is, how many of you feel that you are a stateless indiv person, individual, and homeless too? Where is the nation state that will defend and protect you? Cummings wants to be read in Spanish speaking world and certainly does not want to offend the, sh the sheltered women of Mexico and other bourgeoisie. Very telling why Cummings chose such a protagonist as Lydia to characterize. Lydia's mother's home where the massacre takes place from the get-go is the Mexican version of a gated community. That is, the home is walled in with razor or chicken bar wire topping and maybe a couple of killer dogs. Cummings does depict migrant roadblocks as well as corrupt migrant cops as the one that take most of Lydia's curry cash, Latinx writers uh, complained about good fact-checking. We have to recollect that it is fiction, and to what extent is it fiction? That is our only uh, way to address the book, to what extent it is fiction. To pay them off herself, as well as Soledad and Rebecca, Lydia has to give up most of her wealth before she crosses the border. She is rescuing them from rape and sex trafficking as they are in peril with the Midra, who indeed does rape them before she rescues them for sex trafficking. Fiction may, t may take uh, some facts a bit freely to give the narratives enough to give a narrative believability to target the audience desired but it's not necessarily accountable for all the details that readers may find missing. Lydia could have gotten legal custody of Luca according to a professor's reading of the text. But I ask you, could she have proof of legal custody of Luca for the airlines? If, if so, if she gets that proof, she will have to reveal herself. And one of her aims is to become invisible to her trackers that is, the cocktail. The writer, on the other hand, could not give us a spectacular ride on La Bestia, the infamous train that migrants 
at the risk of their lives are refused to are are induced to take la bestia becomes the star of the narrative actually where people fall off and get trampled and where people get shot by happy cops willing to do some target practice on stateless migrants. The ones who are 100% accountable for facts and evidence are investigative reporters and a solid justice system, as well as the free press, which as Sebastian, Lydia's husband, claims that we are the front lines of the most difficult task of our times, which is to expose the corruption everywhere of our times, the muckraking of our political times. Lydia's husband, Sebastian, who was murdered by the cartel for exposing the new jefe, has been telling her this for many years. But after third, 10 years of marriage, apparently Lydia is still in some denial or a lot of denial. Will she overcome it by this journey? We don't know. Needless to say, Cummins' narrative does not extend to current detention camps for undocumented in the U.S. To what extent is a novel targeted for Gabacho's sheltered world be political? Very, very limited extent, maybe. Maybe Oprah's idea of town hall sessions along the border is a good idea, especially if they tour the detention facilities for children and adults. Cummings refuses to say the word rape or sex trafficking in the 378 pages of text. She alludes to violence and forced sex servitude, but she can't say rape and sex trafficking. Is that her credible deniability? Women who keep silent about being raped? Why? Women who are sex trafficked have no opportunity to speak. The adolescent protagonists Soledad and Rebecca were subjected to rape by mig migra authorities who were about to take them to market until Luca, the boy, pleaded with his mother to rescue them. His mother was reluctant to do so. What about my safety? She's thinking, what about my own safety? She has to buy her safety. As, and the main character is aware and is hard put to accept that she was buying her safety in Acapulco. She paid mordidas to the cartel as the owner of a bookstore. Obviously, her husband doesn't bring his work home until he expresses, exposes El Jefe, El Jefe's identity who has romantic notions of who he is. El Jefe, also named La Lechuza by Cummings, fashions himself a poet, who ultimately seduces Lydia. Oh dear, how would that story end? Miriam Gurba accuses Cummings of appropriating genius works by people of color and repackaging them for mass racially colorblind consumption. Quite true. 
I recommend you read her tongue lashing review. I haven't seen such uncivil, remarkable eloquence since the Chicano movement of the 60s and 70s. Gurba, in her own terms, is a badass chingona. She, however, uh, I must tell Marian Gurba, as Alicia Ostracker said once upon a time, that poets and writers are the thieves of language. And so it is with Cummings, shuffling into her pages many a research fact and creative writing such as that as Luis Alberto Urrea and whom Lydia herself in the book says is her favorite next has thrown her under the bus for her blurb. The rest back away from their endorsement, scared by the fury of the Latinx writers who are as much a thieves of language as anyone else not just the written by the oral as well. Those are the vicissitudes of language and writing. Cisneros Caramelo, published in 2002, is as masterful a narrative as any of the show and tell school of writing in the United States. But now she is tarred and feathered as a malinchista for her blurb. Well, she has many, much company among her peers of chingonas from her generation who are not really known as well by some Latinx. Perhaps Random House Cisneros' as publisher should have given her as high a reward as Macmillan did to Cummings. However, perhaps the cross-border journey of a documented family traveling from Chicago to Mexico City is not the kind of happy story that sells today. How about a movie about it? My family made the trip from Chicago to Mexico, Mexico state of Coahuila. A contrast in culture, language, yet not as miserable as today's migrants whose violent trips to U.S. are part of the humanic in crisis of our times. They have no home anywhere. But what sells today is misery and violence. Not what is disparagingly called chick lit or chick films. They don't make as much money as Die Hard and The Terminator violent fests, which many prefer. Coming seems to use her five years of research for the novel very well, I think. Some of us do that for a PhD. It's credible time for the research, but it was not meant to be a truthful documentary. It was meant to be fiction. Octavio Paz, an eminent Mexican writer, believed in libertad bajo palabra, which is an invocation of freedom of speech, freedom to speak. And what most of us, all of us, at least as in the United States, wish for all writers and speakers. Coming is as entitled to her fictionalizations as any of us. 
as long as we remember it is fiction. Cummings has learned from the best, and some of the best are us who made it into her research. Perhaps about, perhaps, perhaps some begrudge the hype and high pay for a story we have been claiming for over a hundred years. Eduardo Galeano, with his, one of his titles, Open Veins of Latin America, is among those who claims, who is the chronicle of our times by noting the violence of the last 500 years of more that this continent has undergone. Maybe this is the chronicle of the Americas, not American dirt. Yet Latinx community of writers and readers appear to have a happy ending. The group called Dignidad Literaria, co-chaired by Roberto Lovato and Miriam Gurra, have met with Macmillan publishers who have pledged reform and reports of such reform over the next three months. It should be for a year, I think, since three months will not yield enough proof of change. Three months gives them enough of a reprieve to continue the sale of the book and reschedule of the book tour and get the movie underway. And who can challenge the marketing skills of megabucks? Also, it appears that some writers are rising in the sales charts, as it were, some of us, the thieves of language, just as much as Cummings, the Texas Observer has noted that uh, 16 books about Borderlands are heading the list. And Gloria Saldua's Borderlands, La Frontera, the new Mestiza from 1986, leads the list of the six, at least 16 writers. I assure you, there are many more, if you bother to look at the book, the bibliography. I don't believe that American Dirt is the great novel of the Americas, nor is it masterful. It's as palatable a read as any show-and-tell writer in U.S. can produce and create. The thieves of language to which we are liable. Remember, Shakespeare has been plundered to the max, as so has Cervantes, author of Don Quixote, over the past several centuries. Has Cervantes been plundered too? I think so, but we don't reveal that as much as Shakespeare, of course. As individuals, we don't have a language of one's own. It's always already there to construct us as speaking subjects, and we make language our own. We have to. By the twists and turns we give it, as we blow apart our linguistic construction, by dead reckoning of our experience, which we may be hard put to comprehend, but we have to. Cummings has claimed knowledge of the workings of trauma. There's truth to that as the emotions attributed to her major characters do come out of the literature's of post-traumatic stress disorder. But how often can one say over and over again that so-and-so is in fear, that so-and-so is in panic, that so-and-so is an edge of madness among the characters and hatred and so on. Where is the show and tell of these masterful emotions? Perhaps the violence of our times is in itself the show and tell of those emotions. When we act upon our fear or hatred of others, is those acts that point 
to the interiority of a person who wa wants others to be as broken as they are. So, be, so are the rapists and the sex traffickers, murderers and serial killers of our times. Who is Lorenzo, for example, one of the characters in American Dirt, one of Hefe's henchmen? He feels he can rape with impunity. How did he get there? Cummings can't tell you. Tell you. How did Ivan in Honduras believe that he could be the sex user of Soledad? How does he come to feel that he can do this and make her into a sex servant with impunity? How does how does that happen? Cummings, perhaps, to focus on victims and give them a face, we seem to live in times overcrowded by both victims and criminals. We have to know how both victims and criminals become they become in our times. What is our redux of the failed French Revolution? Obviously the American Revolution has also failed, especially as a result of its white supremacist ideology from the beginning of its foundation as a nation state. Latinx did not eviscerate Cummins or her publishers. We did promote their book negatively but scandal sells. And I'm out $30 for a book I didn't care to read. There are better books with greater depth than American Dirt. But it's one of the best of the current chick lit. Will it transfer and transform the hearts and minds of the U.S. audience? My heart and mind has already been transformed by my personal and political experience. Writers will always be on a crusade to get all to read. However, reading has been disappeared from our milieu given the onslaught of fantastic social media that provides us with instant gratification, but not reflective thought. I think that this is an opportunity for us to urge our communities everywhere of all shades to read more and reflect more on their times. Well, as some of us say, no hay bien que por mal no venga. And then a good friend corrected me and said, it's always no hay mal que por bien no venga. Thus, muchos Mexicanos will correct me, who is an inventive pocha when all is said and done. So I retorted, I'll take both. I'm ACDC. I have alternating currents, several, actually. Thank you very much. And I want to thank uh, my son, Joseph McKesson, for his taping this particular talk. Good. You like it? Yeah. Us. You made it. I made it. But I, <laughs> I made it, but I am. Uh, I can't read my own fucking writing. That's why I always type it.